This episode of Distraction is sponsored by Omega Bright CBD. Formulated by Omega Bright Wellness, creators of the number one Omega-3 supplements for the past 20 years. Omega Bright CBD. Safe, third-party tested, and it works. Shop online at omegabrightwellness.com. Hello, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell with a mini-episode of Distraction. As usual, we're releasing one episode a week related to events going on in the world. Last week, I, I talked about George Floyd and what I'd learned from all of that. And today, I'd like to make a comparison. I was in high school and college in the late 60s and early 70s. And it was a very important time for those of us who sort of came of age in that era We had the horror and injustice of the Vietnam War, which took the lives of many of us. But simultaneously, we had the burst of hope that, you know, is caricaturized these days with hippies and the age of Aquarius and all that. But it, in fact, went much deeper. We were literally believing that we could create a new world. Sort of summed up in John Lennon's song, Imagine. The Beatles, in many ways, epitomized the spirit of that era, the spirit of imagination and playfulness and hope and love being the universal value. And and it really uh, captured my imagination and the imagination of many of us. In fact, the reason I went into medicine as opposed to the more logical way of making a living for me, which would have been to become an attorney or go to business school, was because uh, I wanted to help people, literally. I know that sounds corny, but uh, that was the zeitgeist that we were all caught up in. Uh, Love, reach out, help, build communities. And uh, although I wasn't a hippie, at one point I thought, uh, well, I could go be a doctor on a commune. Now, it didn't turn out that way at all. But But there was tremendous hope, and naive, no doubt, but it was really heartfelt hope. And it all kind of fizzled, but uh, but that fervency has always stayed with me, driving me, uh, you know, connection is indeed, continues to be my chief value, my chief recommendation is to connect, to love, to build bridges, to come closer together. And how I think it relates to what we're seeing now is we've been put through a, a major test with the the COVID epidemic and then the George Floyd tragedy. And much as Vietnam set us off protesting, this has also set us off protesting. But I'm hoping and I'm actually believing it well may usher in an era of connection, of coming together, of community, of finding and building bridges, of finding ways of commonality, of stopping pigeonholing people as, you know, as red or blue state or this candidate or that candidate, taking us beyond sound bites and actually getting to know one another. Because the more we get to know one another, the more we'll find that we have in common. The more we get to know one another, the more these political differences won't matter. I always think of, in my generation, John Kenneth Galbraith and uh, William F. Buckley, who were at opposite ends of the political spectrum, absolutely opposite, were very close friends. They would rip each other to pieces in a debate, and then they'd go out and have a few beers together, you know. And more recently, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Justice Scalia, who were, again, at opposite ends, but were close friends, would go to the opera together. That's the model that I would love to see us take this trial that we're going through and turn the the tremendous tragedy of all the people who've died due to COVID and the single tragedy of George Floyd and turn those events into a catalyst for harmony, a catalyst for coming together, a catalyst for putting down our cudgels and our weapons and our insults 
and our demonizing of the other side and saying, you know, we have so much more in common than we have in difference. Let's band together and do what the Congress doesn't seem to be able to do and and create policies of, of unification, of uh, discussion, of sharing, rather than policies of condemnation and separation. I really think it could happen. Much as I caught the fever back in the 60s and 70s, I think our young people are catching it now. I hope so. Well, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell for Distraction. Before I go, I do need to thank our sponsor, otherwise we couldn't be on the air. Our wonderful sponsor, Omega Bright CBD. It's formulated by Dr. Carol Locke of Harvard Medical School and her company, Omega Bright Wellness. I myself have been taking their CBD supplement for about two months now, and I highly recommend it. It helps me with my irritability. <laughs> I can be pretty grumpy. Omega Bright CBD is safe, third-party tested, and best of all, it works. Get Omega Bright CBD online at omegabrightwellness.com. That's O-M-E-G-A-B-R-I-T-E wellness.com. I always point out that the bright is intentionally misspelled B-R-I-T-E. omegabrightwellness.com. That's it for today. Uh, please reach out to us with your questions and show ideas. We love hearing from you. Love, love, love. Write an email or record a voice memo on your phone and send it to connect at distractionpodcast.com. Distraction is created by Sounds Great Media. Our producer is the lovely and talented and graceful Sarah Gurton. And our recording engineer and editor is the ballerina-esque Pat Keogh. The episode of Distraction you just heard was sponsored by Omega Bright CBD, formulated by Omega Bright Wellness, creators of the number one Omega-3 supplements for the past 20 years. Omega Bright CBD, safe, third-party tested, and it works. Shop online at omegabrightwellness.com.